All right, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in again. My name is Brandon Clayton, and I'm excited about our message today as we continue our Bible vlog through the book of Mark. Um, actually, this is our first one, and I want to kick it off in Mark chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 9. And it came to be in those days that Jesus, Yahushua, his uh, Hebrew name, came from Nazareth of Galilee and was immersed by John in the garden. And I'm sorry, in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came out of the heavens. You are my son, the beloved in whom I did delight. And immediately the spirit drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tried by Satan and was with the wild beast and the messengers attending him. All right, let's get a little context here. Um, it's been 400 years of silence since God has spoken to the Jews through any prophets. They have heard nothing. Matter of fact, the last thing they heard was through Malachi saying there will be one coming in the spirit of Elijah. And now you have John the Baptist out in the desert baptizing people, talking about repentance, and there's just great things going on. If you can imagine the excitement, this has finally come. For those who understand the scriptures, for the angels in heaven looking at this moment, this time has come. 400 years. Imagine that to be there at that moment. How exciting. And here comes our master walking up there, getting baptized, and the spirit comes down on him. Now for 30 years, he has waited for this moment. 30 years. I'm 33 and I can imagine all that he's seen up to that point and how he grieved and how he was he was excited he was looking eager looking forward to making some changes but he watched pharisees put their heavy hand of yoke on the necks of people but it wasn't time yet it wasn't time for him to intervene and start making changes he watched friends and loved ones hurting emotionally hurting physically with all kinds of elements but it was not time yet 400 years 30 more years of waiting, of watching, of all, all this going on when he had the power. He was in connection with he who was able, and now he has a spirit. The power has come on him, and it's time now. Can you feel the excitement built up? It is time that he goes out and makes this worldwide change forever that you and I are experiencing now because of what he did at this moment. But the point that stood out to me is what happened right after this. The Spirit drove him to the wilderness, immediately sent him to the wilderness. Stop, don't run from your wilderness. He was sent to the wilderness. Why the wilderness? Look, I don't know everything that happened out there in that desert, but we know a, little, a few things. We know that he was tempted. We know that there were wild beasts there. We know that the angels attended him. We know that he was not eating for 40 days. But I do know one thing. I do know the power that was seen clearly after that moment. And it makes sense that after such a time of struggle, after such a time of hardship, of, 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 of fleshly uh, uh, denial, he would come out even more mature and better prepared. This is not a, a, a new concept. Roman fire says, don't you know that suffering produces character and character hope and hope does not disappoint us in Peter it talks about how our faith is refined by fire by fire and James we know all too well consider it pure joy my brothers when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance and perseverance watch this must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. Look, that time in the wilderness, I believe, was a time of maturing, a time of strengthening, a time of empowering and positioning himself to do what he's about to do. Now, obviously, it was utmost important that the Spirit would lead him there. Look, in my spirit, I'll be like, no, 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 there's things I got to do. There's a woman I saw there who needs some help. There's a guy here who's still talking about blasphemous things. I got to go. I got to go 40 days in the desert. In the wilderness, the Spirit said, yes, you have to go. And many of us run from that wilderness, don't we? Oh, we don't want that pain. We don't want, we, we got to do something now. And we want to try to have the benefits without that wilderness 
experience, without that suffering. If he, the Messiah, could not bypass this wilderness experience before he had an impact the way he did on the world, why do you and I try to get around it? Look, we understand it. We understand it when it comes physically. We totally get it. Look, we understand the need for pain and, and, and pressures because we want to build our bodies to be stronger, men and women. We'll spend 50, 60, $100 a month on memberships, on equipment to get the weights. And we get that pain. And sometimes if I'm in a weight room at the right time, I hear the guys, ah, yeah, it hurts. It hurts good because we know what it's producing. And the next day or two, you're feeling that soreness in your arms and your legs. And, and you know that it's a good soreness because it's producing some good things. We embrace that wilderness. We embrace that hard times. And, I, and, and what I'm calling you to do is if you're going to be serious about following the Messiah, we need to embrace the same wilderness that he did. We embrace it physically. But Paul says in Timothy, for physical training is of some value. Oh, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for this life and a life to come. Look, he, they got it then. They were into the physical. They were into the Greek and the training and the Olympics and all that. They got that physical. He said, that's got, that's got some value, guys. Oh, but godliness. How much time have you been spending working on that godliness? To, to be truthful, we run from that. We run from the mental challenges. You know, I'm a teacher. I, I get the chance to see it all the time. But it's not just with students, but with adults. We say, oh, this is too much work. And we shut down at just looking at something that makes us think critically. I don't want to think to just give me that multiple choice. Oh, I just guess I'll work a little bit mentally. We, we don't want the pressure. We don't want the weight. We don't want the wilderness socially, relationally. Oh, this is too much. I remember in the first year of my marriage, it's just I just want to get away. Oh, we, we having an argument. Oh, I don't want to deal with it. I just oh, get out of here. No, you stay there and you embrace that wilderness because it's through that suffering. It's through that time that he is in putting into you. He is building you up for what's to come. Remember the scriptures. This is not a phenomenon. This is this is just a few passages I've used. But you see the stories. You see Moses becoming a shepherd before he a uh, shepherd of sheep before he was a shepherd of people. You see this transformation going on time and time again. David beating lions and bears before he got to the giant. But he had to go through that and not run from it. Suffering produces character. Consider your suffering joy. I love uh, it, 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 the scriptures say that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. That's how we got to get. We got to stop being lazy in our spirits, lazy in our minds, and we simply wanted to just work out a little bit. Some of us don't even do that. But we get it every other place, but spiritually, we are weak and emaciated. We are skinny and starving spiritually because we opt out every time we get, and we don't want to go to the wilderness for 40 days. Without eating, oftentimes our God is our stomach. I want to eat right now. No, I'm not going to eat. I'm going to teach myself to say no. It's uncomfortable here. It's hot in the daytime. It's cold in the nighttime. No, but I'm going to subject myself to these, 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 these elements so that I can trust him and so that I can grow to be more mature. In that same book where he says physical training is of some value, he says, uh, uh, train yourself to be godly. Oh, I love it. Look, the first part was you got to learn to embrace your wilderness. Don't run from your wilderness. Embrace your wilderness. But I'm going to take it a step higher. Paul takes it a step higher. The master he, himself take it a step higher. He says it's not enough just to embrace the challenges that come to you. Embrace the arguments. Embrace the academic rigor. Embrace everything because it's producing something spiritually. Embrace those things with that mindset, with the joy that's set before you because you know that through this it's going to make you more mature and better prepared to do the work that you're already seeking. But the second part is this. Don't just wait for it. To embrace it, go get it. I love it. He says, train yourself. I'm talking about looking for, I mean, just like you go into the weight room, you go and sign up for a membership. I mean, it's crazy if you look at it from, if you're from another planet and you're watching this whole scene, you're watching people sign up 
and go into a place and lift weights and go, ah, ah, what are you doing in there? Are you running in place and jump roping them? That's crazy. You signed up for pain. Why sign up for pain? Because you understand. I'm calling you right now. Spiritually sign up right now for some pain. What in your life right now could you put in place so that you can challenge yourself? That's what I love about fasting. Fasting, it, it, it does that for you. I'm talking about fast from food. <laughs> and we can fast from a lot of stuff. And, and that's cool, whatever you choose to fast from, because it, 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 it takes out that impurity and those contaminants. But take out food. We all love food. We all want to eat. You take that food out and it challenges you. You say, I, I got to focus. I can get through this. But when you do get through it, you're that much more focused, that much stronger. Fast. Be a little uncomfortable. Take your pillow away from, the, from your bed for a little while. Take the temperature up or down a few degrees and stop being so momo and so uh, 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 spoiled as we are here in America. And you just got to have everything. And if anything is not right, you lose it because you're spoiled and you don't have a wilderness and you're not mature. You're still having the, the same relational uh, IQ of a 15 year old. You're still having the same, same, same spiritual strength of a five year old because you keep being motivated by I feel likes. I don't feel like this. I feel like this. I feel like this. I don't care what I feel. I'm going to beat my body and make it my slave. So I'm calling you today. Don't run from your wilderness. Everybody wants to be like Jesus until it's time to do what Jesus did. Let me say that again. Everybody wants to do, be like Jesus until it's time to do what he did. We say, oh, that was just for him. No, go all in. Let's, if you're going to be a true follower, a true disciple of Christ, a true Christian, a true little, they used to call them uh, little uh, messiahs. They were following. If you want to be a true follower of this rabbi, of this messiah, do what he did. Embrace your wilderness and train yourself. Seek it out so that you can have the maturity that comes from it. When he did it, it changed the world. When Moses did it at the mountain of 40 days, change the world. What are you trying to do? And what have you not been doing because you've lacked it and that you run from your wilderness? I want to call you guys again all in because if we're, either you're all in or you're not in at all. But here's the good news. When we go all in, we all win. All right, thanks for the time. I will see you next time.